Di Ola. Ola. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Bueno. Uh. Go. Uh. Uh. Hey guys, my name is Shayla and I make these videos every Wednesday. I've been traveling full time since 2015. If this is your first time to the channel, Welcome. Hi, I'm Shayla. If you're into traveling or just getting out and going and doing things, if you're a doer, please subscribe to the channel. If you find this video helpful, please like the video. A couple of weeks ago, I made a video about life before living on a one way and I talked about my college and what I was like before and how I was coming during high school. One thing that I mentioned was that I was an au pair in Spain and a lot of you had questions about it, so I figured why not make a video that you all are looking for? So if you are already following and have this question, here it is. If you are new to the channel and you're just like looking for something to do on a gap year or looking for a way to travel, an au pair is a great way to do it. So I'm gonna talk about what is an au pair, why you would wanna do it, questions to ask the family that you find, and my experience in Spain. What is an au pair? If you're already here, you probably know the answer to this, but it's basically an international nanny where someone from another country comes into your home or you go into someone else's home. You work with the kids. Maybe you're tutoring them on your language. Maybe you're, there's like a million things that an au pair can do. We'll get into that in a second. Why would someone want to be an au pair? I was just talking to a friend from high school, Chelsea, who is also an au pair in Italy. Actually, she's super cool too. Her and her boyfriend are traveling full time right now. They are traveling with purpose. So if you're into like volunteering while you're traveling, follow them, I'll put their link below. It's C to C on Instagram. We were talking about why we wanted to be au pairs in the first place. And it was about visas. She ended up getting a student visa because she was taking Italian classes. And so she got to stay longer. I just went on the travel visa and we wanted to go somewhere for an extended period of time. And we wanted like a super cultural experience. So we wanted to be in the home. And when you're an au pair, typically you get accommodation. So you stay with the host family and they make meals for you. So you really get immersed in the culture so much. That's how I travel. I like to, I travel full time, but I'm not like boom, 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 boom. I'm like, let's stay here for a couple months. Now let's stay here for a couple months. So it was super great for me. And then also the language. I chose Spain because I wanted to learn Spanish. I'm talking so fast, sorry guys, but I'm just excited about it. I'm super excited. Like most of us, I took Spanish in high school, but I also worked at a restaurant with Mexican cooks and it was the greatest thing ever because I got to learn it in class where it's like vocabulary and quizzes and then speak with the cooks in, my, in the restaurant who were using the conjugations that I just learned in class and so I loved Spanish and so I went to Spain and if you know anything about Spanish or Spain Spanish, you know that it's very different. It's not gracias, it's gracias and hija is hija and pijamas and just like, so I came back saying vale, vale, vale and the Mexican cooks were like, what? Okay, I don't know. <laughs> you get to learn the language. It's a culture exchange. So I'm bringing some of my American cultures, which I don't even really know what that means. Peanut butter. The kids were completely disgusted by peanut butter. And I was like, what? <laughs> peanut butter is the best thing in the whole wide world. I don't understand. I had just graduated college. So there were students that I knew that were studying abroad. And they're like, hey, we're in Madrid and we're going to go to Paris for the weekend. Can you come? My host dad was like, I'm not going to pay you while you're gone, but you're more than welcome to go. I want you to experience Europe, done and done. So I went to Paris for the weekend, I went to Italy. I'll throw in some pictures of that. So that's why you do it. You do it because you want a cultural experience, you want to learn the language, you want to be there for an extended period of time, but you have to like kids. So if you don't like kids, this isn't the route to go. So I'll tell you about my experience. My experience, I was in Spain. I was in Cobeño, which is a very small, Pueblito outside of Madrid. There were three kids. There were two twin girls that already went to a British school, so they spoke pretty good English. And then there was this little boy who was a year and a half, and he was the coolest. Hola. The hola. Hola. Hello. Hello. How are you? you? Good. Good. Bueno. Uh. Go. Uh. another language at a young age is the coolest thing ever because he's a year and a half and he's understanding everything that I'm saying. Who's this? And he goes, Mickey. I go, what color is this in English? And he goes, azul, which means blue in Spanish. He doesn't know the language yet, but he's understanding what I'm asking him, which was the, it was just so cool. So some of the logistical things were, I paid for my flight out and back and it was like 800 bucks round trip. Then I got to live with them. I got my own room, I got my own bathroom and they fed me every meal. 
when I was in Spain, this was a time that I was eating. I was on the clean your plate club. Eat everything on your plate. Well, everything on my plate was delicious and they would usually serve me more than what I should eat. So I gained a good 15 pounds while I was there. Okay, I need to tone this back a little bit because I'm eating a lot. Regardless, they feed you. I was not there for the money. I was, I already, ha I had money saved. I was just there literally for the experience, but they did pay me a hundred euro a week, which then translated to like $130. So I made some money while I was there, not a crazy amount. I was able to travel, I was able to go to Paris, able to go to Italy, and able to go to those places, but I also got to go to their birthday parties, and I got to go to the park with the kids, and I got to go to things that they had at school, and I really got to immerse myself in the culture. <laughs> So I didn't have to wake up with the kids. I would wake up and they'd all already be at school. I had to, when they got home, speak English to them from the time they got home, from the time they went to bed. I made some games with them in English and I just tried to really engage them in English. A girl down the block from me woke up with the kids, made them breakfast, got them ready for school, drove them to school, did the laundry during the day, made food for dinner, like she had to do everything. Which is fine, if that's what the family calls for. So, that leads me into my next thing. How do you find a family? When you find the family, what are you supposed to ask them? There's two websites. I use greataupair.com and Chelsea said that she used aupairworld.com, which I've heard from a few people. Both of them are free for au pairs. So you can hop on and you say, I wanna go to this country or this country or this country or this country. I wanna go in November or December for like three months. And you put it out there and then it gives you all the families that you can choose from. Then you just start looking at them and you're like, yeah, I like this. You can like put them in your little favorites and you can start conversations with them and see kind of what they're looking for, what you're looking for. That's pretty easy, finding families. Then once you've found the families, how do you know if they're the right fit for you? I wrote down a couple of things that will be helpful. Oh, this sun's right here now too. Good. Close this. I don't know if that really messed it up or not, but I wrote down a couple of things that will be helpful for you. You just want to have candid conversations. Have all the awkward conversations before the awkward things happen and you never talked about it. Start talking with them and once you decide you want to really move forward with the family, I would Skype at least two to three times just to like see their faces, see the kids, get a feel for like the parents' body languages together. Maybe see your room so that you know what it looks like and that it exists. But then also be very candid with them. Maybe have your partner in the video as well so that they can kind of see your body language. So make sure that you ask them expectations. Do they want you to do the laundry and the dishes and take the kids to school and do all those things? That's a perfectly normal job for a nanny. So those are all like things that they can ask for. Or do they just want you to tutor like mine did? How much are you getting paid? I got paid 100 euro a week. Are they paying you more? Are they paying you less? What are your days off? Some, some people are Monday through Friday. Others are Monday through Saturday. Are they open to you traveling? Can you say, hey, I wanna go to France for the weekend or I wanna go to Italy? Most families are because they know that you're there to get a cultural experience as much as they're having you there to get a cultural experience in their home. And then honestly, I would talk to them about if things don't work out, what are we gonna do? If we're gonna be doing this for three months, at one month, let's kind of talk about it and see how things are going. And it's not the best conversation to have. I don't think I even had that conversation with my family. I was just like, I'm in this, it's gonna work out. Traveling the way that I have, I've stayed with families in so many different environments, in so many different places. And so I can tell you that every family is different how they discipline. I would ask them that. Do you do time out? Do you do spankings? Do you talk about it? Do you have them journal? Like how do they discipline? I've seen families discipline differently. I've seen couples interact differently. And that's their business. Like you are in their home. And so unless something is like physical or abusive or something that's not okay, if they argue a different way than you argue or something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable, is it cultural or is it dangerous? Staying in two different Spain families, I would experience two completely different things. If I stayed with two people in the States, I would experience two different things. There's a million different ways to have a relationship and to have a family and you're going into that. Go into it with an open mind and just know that they might not do it the way that you do it and that's okay unless it's dangerous. Overall, I had an incredible experience and after those three months, I was dreaming in Spanish and thinking in Spanish and anyone that spoke Spanish, I just wanted to speak Spanish. I would highly recommend it. If you have a gap year, if you are just looking for something to do for a couple of months and you like kids, do it. I was just talking to a guy on my Instagram who is a male looking for an au pair thing and I was like, 
I was so interested in him. I was like, what? You're a male trying to find an au pair job? Have you found jobs? Are there people that are looking for males? And he's like, surprisingly, there have been a good amount of people looking for males to do this. I think that makes sense. If you have a little boy, maybe you want a boy au pair. Just try it. Just go look. Just go figure it out. Go, go see what it's like. But always trust your gut. If something doesn't feel right, make sure you have enough money to get out of there, to pay for a super expensive taxi out, and to go stay in a hostel. If you have any more questions about being an au pair, please comment them below. If you have been an au pair, please go in the comments and answer your, your experiences because they're gonna be way different than mine. Everyone's is gonna be different. Go ahead and answer as many as you can. I would love to see your guys' like, comments in there. So thank you guys all for watching. Like I said, if it's your first time here, please subscribe. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and go check out my Instagram. It's living on a one way and you will see Instagram stories about what we're doing and where we're at. We go on little hikes in Washington and I honestly have no idea where we're gonna be in 2019, legitimately have no clue after December. I'm so excited because tomorrow's my birthday, November 8th, and then Friday, Amber gets to Seattle, and then Saturday, we're having a meetup in Seattle at Lagunitas. Go to my Facebook if you're interested in that. I've got a lot of fun things coming up, and you will see it all next week. Thank you guys all for watching this week, and I will see you all next week. Mwah! Bye! Seth, <clears throat> why are we at Safeway? Because we all get some pie. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Just for some pie. That's it. How's the donut? <laughs> I'm still eating it. Oh my god, you can't even get <laughs> it. Oh my god.